Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good to see you. Uh, today's the uh, seminar series is now the open. And today we are very happy to, to invite the very famous professor in the field of the um, chemistries. And his name is the Professor the Iwamoto, Masakazu Iwamoto. And he originally graduated this university. So he's, we are the very proud of him. And uh, I am the, actually the, I am the junior of uh, him. And uh, we grad, I graduated the same laboratory with him. And uh, I, in, uh, according to the custom, I briefly introduced Professor Iwamoto's the, um, uh, CV. And uh, you may <coughs> find his the, uh, CV in your the, um, career in, your, uh, in the um, pamphlet. But the, in 1967, he graduated, he graduated the high school from the Nagasaki Prefecture. And uh, <coughs> um, 1973, he graduated the uh, Kyushu University. Um, Faculty of the Engineering, Applied Chemistry, but uh, Master Course. And uh, <coughs> 1976, he graduated a doctor degree from the Kyushu Universities. And uh, 1976, he got the, the uh, he joined uh, Nagasaki University as the associate pro, uh, assistant, uh, assistant professors. And uh, 1978, he improved to the lecture. And uh, 1981, he got position in the associate professor in Nagasaki University. And then he improved to the full professor in the Miyazaki University at 1987, and then moved to the 1990 to the Hokkaido University. And from 2000, he got a uh, full professor in the Tokyo Institute of Technologies. And he got the so many uh, awards from the uh, Chemical Society of Japan, Catalytic Societies, and also, the, one of the very famous ones is the, uh, donated from the uh, Royal Mechanical Engineering Society named uh, Crompton Rochester Medals. And <coughs> he also uh, received to the Ichimura Gakujitsu Foundation uh, Award. And he, the, his main subject is on the nanoscience uh, materials, nanospace uh, science materials, and also the uh, zeolite materials. And uh, <coughs> so, uh, today we have we want I hope to ha uh, hear to the very nice uh, presentation from him and in the field of the nanospace uh, materials. So thank you very much to, to visit us and have the nice seminars today. Thank you very much and please start to your presentations, Professor Yamoto. Thank you very much, Mr. Professor Ishihara, for your kind introduction. Okay. I am from the uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology. As uh, Professor Ishihara already told you, uh, I was graduated from the Kyushu University, and now I'm working for the uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology. Today, uh, I'd like to talk about the synthesis of propylene from ethylene or bioethanol. I'm sorry, I don't have any topics for the hydrogen production or the usage of the hydrogen. Now we are trying the carbon neutral reaction for the propylene formation. Today, I'd like to talk about uh, two topics. The first one is the catalysis of nickel emission 41 for conversion of ethylene. And the second one is the catalysis of indium oxide for conversion of bioethanol. The last part is the uh, conclusion. Okay, maybe you know that the industrial production of propylene is very, very important. This propylene is the second most important starting product after ethylene. And uh, polypropylene is nearly two thirds of all demand. The other type of the product is acetone, isopropanol, uh, acrylonitrile, propylene oxide. In the world, on 2008, 68.4 million tons of propylene are produced. And the cost is 19 billion US dollars in the world. It is one of the most important products in the petrochemical industry. And now we have the petrochemical steam cracker. For the, uh, for the production of propylene. NAFSA is heated in the presence of water vapor and the absence 
of oxygen until the hydrocarbon molecule break apart. The primary products of the cracking processes are olefins, including propylene. However, we know that several disadvantages of this processes. The first one is the consumption of much amount of energy and evolution of carbon dioxide. So we are studying three novel processes. The first one is a catalytic stream crack, catalytic okay, stream cracking of NAFTA. Okay. This is widely studied in the world, but no success is reported. And this one is the second one, the production from ethylene obtained by dehydration of ethane contained in natural gas. This natural gas is recently converted to shale gas. The third one is the catalytic conversion of bioethanol to propylene. I'd like to talk about today these two topics. Okay, maybe you know the uh, researcher in the group of the Professor Ishihara may know that this type of the reactor. This is a gas fed reactor. Now, uh, the catalytic reaction was carried out using a fixed bed flow reactor, okay. made of quartz at an atmospheric pressure. Unless otherwise stated, the partial pressure of reactant, this means that the ethanol or ethylene was 30 volume percent. The product distribution is also determined the gas chromatograph or uh, HPLC. This is a typical apparatus for our experiment. This is the control unit of the temperature and the flow rate. And this is the reactor. The inside is written here. Okay. This is the catalyst. In this case, uh, this is a bench scale experimental apparatus. So this is very wide. <laughs> and uh, we have the 50 millimeter in, in the diameter. Okay, uh, we are using this type of the catalysis uh, reactor. As far as we have tried the interconversion of lower olefin. I mean, the, the conversion of ethylene, propylene, and butene. This black line indicates the practical processes. Okay. I mean, for example, the ethylene can be converted to the butene due, uh, due to the dimerization. But, this blue line okay, is realized on the nickel or titanium complexes in liquid phase. There is no heterogeneous catalysis for the dimerization of ethylene to butene. And of course, we don't have any processes from ethylene to propylene. There is no process. Okay. At first, we have tried this broad blue process. Okay, this is a typical experimental result. This is a reaction temperature. This is a conversion of ethylene to butene, to propylene, and to hexene. I have already told you, I, we have originally tried to form butene at 300 degrees C we can realize the formation of butene from ethylene. This is a dimerization reaction. Okay. During this study, my graduate student, Mr. Kitagawa, found the new product in the reaction. And we have decided the product, that is the propylene. We have surprise in, the, in this reaction Product, uh, product distribution, okay? Because I have already told you, there is no report from ethylene to propylene. During our study, from ethylene to butene, we found the formation of propylene on this nickel catas. So we have expanded and changed to that our research topics to the propylene formation immediately. <laughs> okay, why? 
Uh, this is uh, why we, uh, we change the topic. The existing major method to, pr to produce propylene is, uh, I have already told you, to the cracking of naphtha. And the second one is the dehy dehydrogenation of propylene. And more demand of propylene due to the increment in production of polypropylene, propylene oxide, polyurethane, etc. Et and at that time, mild cracking of naphtha is already studied. And ABB Rumas company developed the metathesis of ethylene and butene. And this is already uh, developed in the Mitui chemical at that time. We found the one, one path conversion of ethylene to propylene. At that time, little catalysts have been reported for this reaction. So we continue this reaction. And we found at first this nickel ion loaded silica MCM41 is the only catalyst for the production of propylene. This is the propylene and building, and this is hexene. You can find no catalyst except for zinc nickel is active for this catalysis. This figure shows the effect of the partial pressure of ethylene. At the higher partial pressure of ethylene, the conversion to propylene is increased. This figure shows the effect of the catalyst weight on ethylene conversion. Okay. The smaller catalyst weight indicates the small, small contact time of the gases on the catalyst. You can find the longer contact time here. Longer contact time increase the ethylene conversion. And the propylene selectivity is also increased. And then butene selectivity is decreased with the weight uh, or the contact time. Okay. At that time, the hexene is decreased. We want to estimate the reaction mechanism from these results. There are two proposals. The first one is the cracking of hexene. I mean the three ethylene molecules to form one hexene molecule. And then this decompose two propylene molecules. This is one suggestion. The second one is the dimensization of ethylene to form butene, one butene. This one butene is isomerized to two butene. Two butene react with one more ethylene molecule to form two propylene molecules. We want to confirm which is correct for the reaction mechanism. At first, we have tried the reaction of one hexene on nickel silica MCM41. At this temperature range, hexene is easily reacted and the product is the butene, propylene, ethylene, pentene. This means hexene could be converted to various olefins on this catalyst. No selective formation of the propylene. On the other hand, in the reaction of ethylene and one butene, this is the partial pressure of butene and ethylene of the raw material. There is a formation of propylene, very, very selective formation of propylene and the 300 degree C. So this selective uh, formation of propylene through the metathesis of ethylene and butene was confirmed on nickel MCM41 catalyst. So, and then, we have tried the reverse reaction. I mean, uh, we have checked the reactivity of propylene on this catalyst. This is a conversion of propylene. 
we confirm the formation of butene to N ethylene as a byproduct of the hexene. Okay. You can find this is a conversion. The ratio of butene and ethylene is a two to one. This two to one indicates the reverse metastasis reaction. Uh, in addition, uh, we have confirmed the uh, essentiality of the nickel ion. Without nickel ion, there is no reaction. So we need the presence of the nickel ion for this reaction. Okay, this is a summary of this ethylene to propylene reaction. Uh, on nickel MCM41 at 573 Kelvin, we convert ethylene to butene with the selectivity of 93%. At this temperature range, propylene can be obtained with the conversion of 53% and selectivity of 55%. And the reaction mechanism is written here. Two ethylene molecule is converted to one butene via dimerization. This one butene is converted to two butene with the isomerization. This two butene reacts with one more molecule, one more ethylene molecule to, to form the two propylene molecules. This is the metastasis reaction. Okay. So three ethylene molecule is converted to two molecules, two uh, propylene molecules. And these are published on these uh, papers. And very recently, the Professor Lehman of the Max Planck University, uh, Max Planck Institute, they reproduce uh, this type of the reaction. I don't want to say so, but in the case of the heterogeneous catharsis, the reproducibility is frequently very difficult. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> but in this case, uh, the researcher in the Germany uh, reproduced this one. They reported the nickel loading by equilibrium adsorption method is better than ours. Okay. But I don't think so. <laughs> but OK, this is reproduced by the German researchers. Okay. And there are many papers concern, uh, after this paper. OK, and we have uh, tried the characterization of the nickel ion on the silica. This is the TPR, temperature program reduction spectra of various nickel loaded cations. You can find that the loaded nickel ion, active nickel species, is very, very hardly to be reduced. Okay, this is the exact spectra of our spec uh, sample. This spectra is very similar to the to the spectra of nickel silicate species, and how we have confirmed that equilibrium adsorption is also useful for the catalyst preparation. After the several characterization, we have confirmed that now we have the conclusion. This type of nickel species is active for this metathesis reaction. Okay. This is located on the five SIO rings. This type B is in this case, the nickel ion is loaded on the six SIO ring. This is active for this reaction. This is published on the, these papers. Okay, I'd like to, to change my topic to the ethanol conversion. As you know that bioethanol is produced from the carbon dioxide via photosynthesis. Okay. And this uh, carbohydrate is converted 
to the ethanol via saccharification and fermentation. And at the present, now we are using this bioethanol as a fuel. But I think, or maybe you think, that the use of bioethanol as a fuel is not so good. <laughs> because we need one year or two years from here to here. Tomorrow, we burned out that produce bioethanol. Such process is good, do you think so? <laughs> so we convert, we consider this process. This ethanol should be converted to propylene. This propylene can be used for the formation of propylene and others. After that, we can reuse or recycle. And this blue process enable the long-term fixation of carbon dioxide. So we need to develop the conversion process of from ethanol to propylene. Of course, OK? The conversion of ethanol to ethylene, this is very easy. 99% conversion and 99% of selectivity is already achieved. So we have the target of this reaction. And of course, we know that on georide catalyst, ethanol can easily be converted to propylene by using the shape selectivity. Okay. The shape, uh, uh, maybe you don't know the georide. Georide is a very, very porous material of silica and alumina. And uh, this georide has a window of the, for example, for 5.5 angstrom uh, in the case of the GSM5 georide. Okay. So there is a big pore in the georide. There are many types of the reaction in the pore. But after the such reaction, okay, this pore is very narrow. So ethylene, propylene, and butene can pass through this window. This is the shape selectivity. Shape selectivity. But such many types of the reaction result in the deactivation due to the cork formation in the pore. So we don't want to use the georide. We have tried to develop reaction mechanism control selective catalysis. I have already told you this type of the reaction. So we considered this ethylene can be produced from ethylene, uh, ethanol. We have tried this reaction. OK, uh, this is the uh, time course of the ethanol conversion on nickel emission 41. Uh, this is the uh, reaction of the 10 hours. There is no conversion of ethanol and the uh, formation rate of ethylene, propylene, and uh, butene, and the diacetyl ether is not changed during this 10 hour. However, the formation of acetaldehyde is slightly increased. But at that time, at that time, uh, there is no deactivation. We confirmed, uh, concluded there is no deactivation. And uh, this is the XRD pattern of nickel emission 41, before and after the reaction. There is no change of the XRD pattern. So we confirm the stability of the nickel emission 41 for this reaction. Uh, about four years ago, uh, we have started the collaboration with the Japanese companies, uh, with uh, Idemitsu Kosan, Sumitomo Chemical, and the Toyota Motor Company. After the starting of the <laughs> collaboration, we found the very, very severe deactivation. <laughs> OK, during 10 hours, the catalytic activity is uh, 
スムーズリーディアクティベイティーなんていうか OK we have tried the many many type of the starting materials and the preparation method was、uh, tried however we cannot avoid、okay? this type of the deactivation so And half years later, we have abandoned the improvement of this catas. Okay, I mean that nickel MCM41 was deactivated at high pressure pressure of ethanol. When we studied in our laboratory this type of the reaction, the pressure pressure of ethanol is only 5.5 percent. In the industrial reaction. The partial pressure is, of ethanol is increased to 30%. This is the demand from the practical use of the catalyst. High partial pressure of, is needed. And new catalyst, other than nickel emission 41 and geolite, should be developed、okay, to realize the production of biochemical and bioplastic from bioethanol. We needed new concept. After the start of the NEDO project, <laughs>、okay. we have to change our catalyst. At that time,、uh, we have studied、uh, very, very tightly the similar reaction. We found that similar reaction was already reported by Professor Sato of the Chiba University. They reported one e t h a n o propanol was converted to three p e n t a n o l On cerium oxide, oxide and iron oxide. We consider this is very similar reaction to the, our target reaction. I mean, 2 propanol minus C1 equals 3 pentanol. This is their reaction. We consider 2 ethanol minus C1 to acetone. So, Can we obtain propylene instead of acetone from ethanol? Or can intermediate acetone be converted to propylene in the reaction system? We have tried these two types of the reaction. And we have, of course, started the reaction on cerium oxide. This is the original catalytic activity of cerium oxide. And after the addition of iron oxide, we observe this blue bar. Blue bar is the yield of the acetone.、Okay. You can find the much amount of acetone is produced on cerium oxide and iron oxide. So the result, experimental result of the Professor Sato is reproduced. Here.、Okay. So we have checked the other type of the additive. We found ethorium and niobium is very good for the production of propylene.、Okay. And this is a typical result of the ethorium added cerium oxide catalyst.、Okay. This is the time course of the reaction. This is the product of the propylene, and this is the yield of ethylene. You can find、uh, during the about 60 hours, there is no change of the catalytic activity.、Okay. This is very, very stable catalyst for the production of ethylene and propylene.、Okay. However, the conversion level to propylene is about 35 or 40%. We want to have the much amount, of, more amount of the propylene from ethanol. So we have tried the catalytic activity of indium oxide. <coughs> And、uh, we found indium oxide is very active for the production of ethylene. But there is a deactivation. So, we have at this,、uh, at this time 
uh, we have two types of the problem. The first one is the deactivation. And second one is the low yield of propylene. We have to solve this problem. We have added the second component on this catalyst. Okay, the catalytic activity is changed with the depend uh, with the additive. In these catalysts, the addition of scandium, zirconium, bionium, chromium, molybdenum, and cobalt, nickel, and copper is good for the improvement of the catalytic activity. So we have checked the dependency on the metal loaded amount. And you can find uh, several experimental results. Among these results, scandium and nickel addition is very good for the propylene formation. In the case of the scandium, one or three percent addition, very, very few addition is effective. In the case of the nickel, the, the added amount of nickel is uh, very wide. Okay. But in the case of the nickel ion added cations, the catalytic activity is decreased with the reaction time. Okay. I'm sorry, the figure is very small. Okay. This is the XRD pattern of the fresh indium oxide. And this cations is reduced to the indium oxide, uh, sorry, indium metal. Besides, this is the remaining indium oxide. After the use of the nickel loaded indium oxide, we found again the indium metal. So the addition of nickel ion is not good for the uh, durability of the catalyst. In the case of the scandium, there is no such reduction. I don't know why, but we believe that scandium is uh, located on the some, several kind, some kind of the defect on the indium oxide side, on the indium oxide surface. Maybe there are, type, there are several types of the defect on the indium oxide. One defect is very, very active for the reduction. Okay. This defect is covered by scandium. So we need only one or three percent of the loading of scandium. Now we believe so. Okay. And this figure shows the effect of the water and hydrogen addition on the activity. Uh, this is the partial pressure of the water, and this is the partial pressure of hydrogen. And the catalytic activity was measured the three, weight, uh, three atomic percent added scandium on indium oxide. Okay, you can find uh, that the catalytic activity for the propylene formation is increased with the addition of water and hydrogen. Okay. Please see one, one more experimental finding. This value, so sorry, very, very small letters. This value indicates the carbon deposition after the use of the catalyst. Okay. On the original catalyst, 0 percent, 0 percent. The carbon was deposited on three, nine weight percent or eight percent. By the addition of water and hydrogen, the, the amount of the carbon deposition is greatly decreased. So this improves the durability of the catalyst. Okay, so the ordinary catalytic activity is written here. This is improved to this one. Okay. There is a much amount of the deactivation. 
And uh, uh, at these reaction temperatures, the main product is at the other high. But on this catalyst, the main product of the propylene in all temperature range, and the maximum amount of the propylene is about, the, about 60%. It is very good for, for the catalysis. This is the summary of the catalytic activity. Uh, we found the novel catalysis of indium oxide. At this point, the yield is about 30% at 73 Kelvin, uh, 723 Kelvin. Okay. But the durability is not good. And we, found, we have two problems. The first problem is the deactivation caused by the first one is the reduction of indium oxide to indium metal. The second reason is the carbon deposition. This problem is improved by the addition of scandium and water prevented the reduction. Scandium is prevent preventing the reduction of indium oxide. And water reduce the deposition of carbon. Okay. And the second problem is the low yield of propylene due to byproduction of acetone. This is, this is improved by the introduction of hydrogen. Hydrogen can convert the acetone to propylene. As a result, this Scandium more uh, promoted indium oxide is uh, gave the propylene yield of 60% and stability for 50 hours. Okay, uh, we have already finished the development of the active catalyst. So we have changed our topics to the reaction mechanism because this type of the reaction is not reported. Okay, this is the space velocity. This is a very, very rapid reaction. Okay. At this point, uh, 100,000 per hour. 100,000 per hour is uh, almost the same the catalytic activity of the automobile exhaust gas uh, catalyst. Okay, so you can see from here to this one. This is the added or introduced uh, ethanol. Introduced ethanol is converted to others, so the amount is decreased with the contact time, okay, low space velocity. And this ethanol is converted to this one. This is the acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is then converted to this one, acetone. Acetone is, is converted to the propylene and one butene. Uh, sorry, isobutene, sorry. Please be careful that in, at the same time of the formation of acetone, there is a formation of carbon dioxide. So this result indicates the parallel formation of acetone and carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide is converted to carbon monoxide due to the presence of the hydrogen. Okay. And this is a water gas shift reaction. Okay. So we can confirm ethanol is converted to acetaldehyde Acetaldehyde forms the acetone, and acetone is converted to the propylene. Okay. This type of the reaction is confirmed various type of the, the intermediate. Okay. Ethanol or acetaldehyde yield the acetone and propylene. And acidic acid. Okay. Acidic acid is converted to acetone. Okay, acidic acid we cannot see as the intermediate because okay. 
the reaction of acetic acid, acetic acid is very, very rapid. The space velocity is uh, 500,000 uh, per hour. It is very, very rapid reaction. And acetone is converted to the isobutene in the absence of hydrogen. This reaction is carried out in the presence of the nitrogen. In nitrogen, acetone is converted to isobutene in the presence of hydrogen. Uh, acetone is converted to propylene. So the effect of the hydrogen addition is uh, supported on this catalytic react uh, product distribution. Okay, also we have confirmed the mass balance of the several compounds. And we confirmed uh, in, the all, in all cases the mass balance of the product distribution. Okay, so now we are suggesting this type of the reaction. Okay, this is the reaction via acetylene. Ethanol can be converted to propylene via acetylene. But, okay, I have already told you this is the case of the nickel MCM41. However, this is not the case on indium oxide. On indium oxide, ethanol is converted to acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde is converted to acetic acid or this type of the aldo reaction or Tischenko shank reaction. In the case of the uh, Tischenko shank reaction, this compound is formed. And in the other reaction, this dimerization is proceeding. Okay. After that, there is a formation of acetone. Acetone is converted with the reaction of acetylene to propylene. Okay. Now, we are considering that this green line is the reaction route on the indium oxide. So to confirm the reaction mechanism, we perform carried out the DFT calculation of each reaction pathway on indium oxide. And we found that this is the activation energy, and this is the uh, heat of the reaction. You can find this reaction, acetaldehyde is converted to acetic acid. It's very, very easy than this one. Okay. Or in the DFT calculation, acetaldehyde is adsorbed as metokic uh, ion, CH3. Uh, Acetic acid, sorry, acetic ion, CH3CO ion, sorry. This CH3CO reacts with surface hydroxy group, OH, so to form the acetic acid. This is very easy reaction. In the formal reaction, acetic, uh, acetic acid is, uh, sorry, Acetic acid is oxidized with water to form this uh, carbox compound. So this is the conclusion of, for propylene production from ethanol. We know that the shape selective catalysis on geolite, but this has a D severe deactivation. And this metathesis route is also developed. However, the reaction rate is not so high. And we found new catalytic reaction through acetaldehyde has been found on scandium modified indium oxide. And the yield of propylene leads approximately 60%. These are reported on these papers. 
And uh, this paper is highlighted on the chemical and engineering news. Okay. Okay, uh, this is a picture of our laboratories. Okay. Dr. Uh, Tanaka and Mr. Mizuno and Ms. Kurosawa and Ms. Uh, Dr. Hayashi, and uh, they are carrying out the experimental. And Dr. Shiga uh, carried out the DFT calculation. And the uh, finding support is written here. Okay. At last, uh, the main audience is a uh, young researcher. So I have to say one thing, okay, <laughs> to young researchers. Okay, now I'm believing that science and technology are not knowledge, but result of the discovery and development. I want to say the young people are learning the, in the classes. Such Knowledge is the result of the discovery and development. After 10 years or five years, you have to find a habitat position for the discovery and development. Okay. And please make one endeavor for discovery and development on original ideas. This original idea is very important, I believe so. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.